Again, that was Omar Tawakol from Foysia. Great stuff. Our next company, Doré, will discuss using blockchain technology to revitalize the world's raw materials industry. Their CEO and co-founder is here, and she's going to be joining us on stage now. So please help me welcome Abba Schubert. Please help her give us a warm collision welcome. Hi, I'm Abba, co-founder and CEO of Dore, the Physical Commodities Cloud. It's great to be here today. We've got a fantastic room of people. I'm going to talk with you now about Dore and about basic materials. It's a very important sector for us. Now, the very basics, it all starts with these. This is one of my favorite versions of the periodic table, partly because we all come from somewhere, and I'm originally from Ohio. This table was made by Dr. Jennifer Johnson, an astronomer at Ohio State University, so it's kind of from Ohio too. Now, the real reason I like this table is because it's color-coded to show the stellar origin of each element. You can see there the orange ones are from merging neutron stars, and the green ones are from exploding massive stars. These are the basics stuff from Big Bang Fusion and exploding stars. These elements, their journey and their potential, is what inspired Dore. Because we get to work with what's here, and if it's not here, we can't use it. So we have to make the very best and the most of these that we can. Ernest Hemingway captured it well when he wrote in The Old Man in the Sea, now is no time to think of what you do not have. Think what you can do with what there is. And we've done so much with these materials. The instruments used by Dr. Johnson to observe the phenomena here marked with the colors, they were built with these same elements. And our understanding of matter and its behavior is what enabled us to analyze the information that was gathered. So at the end of the day, our only real limitations are one, our knowledge, and two, the materials we have. Now, we've done so much with these basic materials. Take even quantum computing. It's just there where we can grasp intellectually, but physically, it's even more challenging because it takes a profound understanding and command of materials to create the right semiconducting properties and then to cool it all way, way down close to absolute zero absolute zero. That's around minus 460 degrees Fahrenheit, the point at which molecules stop moving and their constituent atoms spread out to exist in more than one position at the same time. So it boils down to the materials we have and our knowledge. Now, with these basics, we've made great stuff. Lots of it. We've learned to isolate, combine, and work with so many of the materials in our universe in wonderfully sophisticated ways. We can build machines that fly. We can heal our bodies. We can generate images of black holes in galaxies 53 million light years away. So it's easy to forget that most of these things arise in one way or another from materials that have come out of the ground, like this one. This is iron ore. It came from that hole. That's a deposit in Europe that's been mined since the Roman times. For 2,000 years, human beings have been digging rocks out of that hole and turning them into useful things. Now, you don't just transform a rock like this and its cousins into great stuff. It takes a mass of complexity and it's the culmination of global processes and generations of increasing know-how. Funny thing, though, a lot of the commercial processes that accompany these great feats of engineering are surprisingly archaic. Think paper, lots of paper, phone calls, telex. What even is a telex? 
all this art is layered on top of that science. It's a global phenomenon, and it's entrenched, because it works. But like many things, it's far from perfect. So where else can we go with these guys? The wonders we've learned to do with basic materials have shaped our lives in so many ways. It's vast. Where can a business find an angle here? Well, we all know how complex modern supply chains can be. A material comes from somewhere, needs to get somewhere else to be processed. So it's traded and transported many times along the way. The process repeats, and the material zigzags around the world until it becomes a finished product. It goes on ships, it crosses borders, it transforms from stuff in a hole to great stuff. And this happens in little chunks, millions of times a day. It drives our economies, it shapes our politics, it frames our society, and it's a very deep market for growth. Now, any link in one of these chains can be vulnerable, and just think of the ripple effects that come from a disruption in any network system. So we build resilience where we can. And where we can't build for resilience, we have to learn resilience of a different sort. We muddle through. It's this interplay between strength and vulnerability that makes our world what it is. It's the essence of doing what we can with what there is. And it gives rise to wonderful opportunities for those who are looking. At Dory, we focus on the friction points in this great and constant journey of materials. We're a global business, and we have been from the start, because that's the nature of our client base. We have to understand the waters they navigate. We're constantly asking ourselves, where are things still ridiculously manual? And what can we do with that? Now, remember that telex I mentioned? That's one from the Science Museum in London. People still actually have to use these. And the reason is because it's a reliable, accepted standard. And it's not the house system of some market participant. But it's a bit ridiculous, right? It's in a museum. And it's one of the reasons why Dore exists. At Dore, we focus on automation, accountability, and interoperability. We bring our clients away from those archaic systems and right up to the present. Dore digitizes trade documents and other information. This gives us better information management, automatic document generation, and digital document exchange. All of that reduces processing time and minimizes errors. And the telex? It's about accountability. The natural next generation is distributed ledger technology administered by a non-market participant. A well-crafted distributed ledger system like Dore's is a powerful tool for audit and compliance because we need data integrity. Finally, interoperability. It's a major issue for new distributed ledger systems because novelty can bring complexity. It's a priority for Dore. We focus on it every day, and it's about craftsmanship. And we think it's a trend for the space as a whole, because isolated systems can't grow. All these elements, automation, accountability, interoperability, they combine to accelerate business for Dore's clients. Automation helps them do more of what they do and better. It lowers working capital and improves resilience. Accountability drives global dividends from local efforts. It opens new markets, and it lowers compliance risk. And interoperability, it enables automation and accountability. It fosters new business relationships and supports growth. The result is acceleration. When we focus on what we have and we do our very best with it, we can do great things. Now, a parting thought. All of us in this room, we have access to highly sophisticated technology. We're lucky. And sometimes, when we want to make the best use we can of these tools, it helps to focus on the basics, our knowledge and our materials. This is how we grow, because you can't argue with absolute zero. And there's no sense thinking what you don't have. Think what you can do with what there is. 
and let's do it well. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you at Web Summit in the fall.